trying to finish up lesson number 11. Last week we got down to the outline and called it quits. So we'll pick up there and notice what Paul was saying in chapter 11. And uh, then we'll go from there. So let's bow and go to God in prayer before we start. Holy, righteous, eternal, heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for this time we have to assemble together here. We're thankful for your word. As we enter into a study of it this morning, we ask that you would be with us and help us to rightly divide your word, to learn to use it in our lives and to be a light to those around us. Please help us that we say and do those things which are in accordance with your will. Help us as we study from the book of Romans about uh, the gospel and the power that it has on the lives of men. We're thankful for the gift of Jesus we're thankful for your grace and your mercy and the love which you have shown to us. Please help us to overcome, and we'll give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. So uh, if you turn to your outline of uh, on page 31 of your lesson book, we'll get back into the study of uh, what Paul has brought forth in this chapter. Uh, some have drawn the conclusion, and Paul is denying that, that God has totally rejected Israel. And so in the verses 1 through 10 of this chapter, he shows us why this is not true. And uh, what's the first reason why he could say that that's not so? When he says there's a remnant, okay, according to grace, not well, that's plainly there in the outline. Okay, uh, looking at himself, he sets forth himself as an example. That's not so, because he received the gospel, didn't he? He, prior to the uh, trip to Damascus, he was one of those who persecuted the church. And he didn't receive Jesus as who he was or is. I try to guide my words when talking about Jesus. I must do that in the present test because he is. He is our Savior. He's at the right hand of God. We have God's mercy through him. So Paul says, I myself am one who has received the gospel message. I believe in who Jesus is, and I've obeyed him. And now he, uh, as an apostle, is, is writing this letter to the church at Rome. Uh, what else do we have as evidence? He's done previously in Elijah's day. Okay. Uh, there was, uh, as God told Elijah, there were 7,000 remaining that uh, there was a remnant then of this great nation who were still loyal and faithful to God. Uh, a remnant that were that because of the grace that God had extended. And uh, that's what saves us, isn't it? The grace that God has uh, given to us and that he sent his only begotten son. It's not because of anything that you or I can do to save ourselves, 
but because God has provided a way. I can accept those conditions, can I? And so uh, it's, uh, we are part of that remnant, if you will, uh, who are going to receive the blessings of God because of uh, the grace that he has shown to us. Baptism is not a work, is it? It's an act of obedience. God says, here's the conditions. You must believe in who Jesus is and what he did. And you got to confess him before men. That was part of the instruction. Uh, and then be baptized. And then I've made it. I, I see some, <laughs> some heads going this way. We have to daily take up our cross. And as Jesus said, be faithful unto death. And then we can have the crown of righteousness. Uh, so in verses 1 through 6, then we have the evidence supporting the uh, fact that not all Israel had rejected who Jesus is. Uh, but there were some who were hardened. What's that mean? Okay. My way is better than your way. And really, Paul was the best choice. He was a Jew among Jews. And yet, you know, he came from that upbringing, and he, you know, valued all of that, that he was from Abraham lineage, and that he was a Jew. And it was, it really became an obstacle for him to overcome that and to accept Jesus. And who could God have chosen that was a better representative to the Jews other than Paul? I mean, Paul was so zealous about it. He was, he was uh, persecuting all of the, the way, the new church, the new um, believers and, and disciples. And so he, he actually had been where they were, and they were still rejecting Jesus. And Paul was trying to so Paul is a, or Saul as he was known as, as a Jew, is a good example of how we can zealously be wrong. He felt that he was doing what was right, didn't he? But he had rejected who Jesus is. And so now, because Paul saw the light, we could say. He was on the way to Damascus to do more persecuting of Christians, and Jesus appeared to him, and uh, he obeyed, didn't he? And then he became a more zealous, if you will, uh, speaker of God's word, and uh, he's now teaching according to the way which Jesus brought. So uh, that's God's plan for us, isn't it? Now, if I reject any part of God's plan, I, I can't have it, can I? But uh, God has, because of his grace that he has shown to us, provided a way in which uh, we can be saved. And Paul taught here in uh, the first... Uh, Oh, up through uh, chapter 7, uh, he's talking about uh, uh, us rejecting God's will and being a sinner. And we can't be in God's uh, presence and be sinners, so we have to obey uh, what he has told us to do. Uh, so in chapter, or yes, chapters uh, 7 through 
10 actually into uh, chapter 11 where we're at we see where people have uh, uh, their hearts have been hardened uh, the Jews wanted to teach tradition rather than what uh, God said and uh, so they needed to obey in uh, I get my outline up here where we're at in chapter 17 uh, or in verse 17 of, of chapter 11 he talks about uh, the Gentiles and their attitude. What what were they doing? It sounds like maybe they were getting the attitude they were better than the Jews somehow. I don't know how they would come about that, but they again I had the advantage of reading what Paul said, so Yeah. <laughs> The Jews, they would say, well, the Jews, you, you have rejected who Jesus is. We've accepted him. We have now access to God's grace. Is that a right attitude for them? Not really, because they should, should realize that Jews can be grafted back in. But they didn't, they took it, we are the ones now. You're left mm -hmm. out. And that was not the Christian attitude. Either. So uh, I'm really better than you because I, I've accepted who he is. But we need to be careful that we don't have that kind of an attitude. I've obeyed the gospel, so I, I've received God's grace, and I'm better off than those who are on the outside. That didn't help the matter any, did it? <laughs> didn't help them a bit, did it? No, I mean, it didn't help but the Jews. Um, we're hearing that because no. it made them jealous. And... Well, how does that affect those on outside of the church? Yeah, that would be a bad problem. Yeah, that that causes a wedge to be driven in there, doesn't it? We have to be careful we're not puffed up about our salvation. We need to be thankful, and we need to do God's will, but... Who did he send his love for? All people. All people. What did Jesus say? Who needs a physician? The sick. That's all of us, basically. Well, yes. But, uh, uh, they were condemning him for eating with sinners. And he wanted them to see that they really needed him. And so he was there trying to persuade them. And likewise, we should be there trying to persuade them also. Because without the gospel, we'll be eternally lost. That's God's remedies, not mine. God's remedy, I should say, not remedies. It's the only remedy. Uh, so he uses the... Uh, example of grafting a wild branch into a uh, cultivated olive tree. There were some branches that weren't producing and they were cut off and now the Gentiles had been grafted in, hadn't they? In a sense. That's the example of, of where they stood in the plan of salvation. Pat? I don't know too much about grafting, but um, what I've read about it is when you do that, that's a very tender, delicate thing, and you have to be, be very careful with it. And so I think that's part of this. They have to be careful how they're doing it um, because it's a very tender uh, piece of material 
being grafted into another very tender piece of material. Okay. And, uh, it has to be taken care of. You don't just do it and then walk away from it. Okay. Um, when you graft something in, there's a chance that it won't take or uh, be uh, I'm all lost for my word I want to use here uh, that it is received by the the good cultivated plant and uh, so Paul's saying they should be thankful that they were grafted in not be haughty about uh, who they were now and you've rejected the Lord but they should be concerned for them just as Paul was concerned uh, so uh, God hardened the hearts of the uh, Israelites some of them who rejected him and what he told them to do and they didn't receive the Messiah who was foretold to them through the prophets. They should have been expecting, but they expected who they wanted it to be and not what God said. They wanted an earthly kingdom, didn't they? So that's uh, where both the Jew and the uh, Gentile were in this uh, example that Paul uses. Uh, throughout all of the chapters up, up until this point, what was Paul trying to get them to see? The for all. Okay. Uh, God's grace his love, his mercy, has been extended to everyone, hasn't it? It's what I do about that which uh, controls the outcome of it, isn't it? And I can obey the gospel and still be eternally lost if I don't follow what God has said. So uh, he's wanting them to be united in their efforts. There was a place for both of them, wasn't there? They could work alongside of each other and get more done, couldn't they? And Paul was concerned that uh, the Jews would be saved. These were his people, weren't they? So he had a concern for them. Uh, as uh, we come to the end of uh, this chapter, we see that Paul had in verses 33 through 36 a hymn, a hymn of praise for, for that which God had done and his hope for Israel to be saved. Uh, any questions or comments before we get into chapter 12? Now, he changes a little bit on how he approaches it from here on out, but uh, let's uh, look at chapter 12. He says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. He's pleading with God. Christians, isn't he? And he's saying, uh, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. What's that mean? Well, in the past, uh, the priest offered up dead animals in sacrifice. But now... But that law is taken away, and Christ has already given the sacrifice of himself. We are to be uh, offering ourselves 
by the way we live and act and conduct ourselves as a living sacrifice. Okay. And then he uses the word holy. What's the word holy mean? Set apart from God. Okay. Uh, and then he says, acceptable to God. Why can't I do anything I want to do? No. She says no. And God will say no only. He just prescribed what is acceptable for us to do. We can look around us and see where people are doing that. Whatever pleases me. And sometimes it gets down to entertainment, doesn't it? Rather than the worshiping of God because of the mercy and the grace and the love which he has shown to us. He's provided a way in which uh, we can be saved, so we should be thankful. And then the last part of verse 1, Paul says, which is your reasonable service. What do you mean by that? Well, we deserve death. Exactly. That's what we deserve. Yes. And there's nothing I can do of, of myself that will change that. But God has provided me a way, hasn't he? And if I'll accept his conditions to that, I can have my burden of sin taken away. He's provided this way. And Paul says, that's your reasonable service. Because of the grace, the love, the mercy that God has shown to us, it's only reasonable that we serve him in his prescribed way. And then he says in verse 2, we're going to sort of take this apart as we go. And do not be conformed to this world. What's that mean? Don't do the things of this world. Don't be like the world. Don't act like the world. Put it in my own simple term there. Yeah, that's what it means. Yeah. Uh, I might like some of the things that the world does, but that's not what Paul's talking about, is it? Don't conform your actions to the ways of the world. And we could stand, stand back and observe what the world does and the outcome of it. And we can see that it's not very good that we get ourselves into things that we shouldn't. And there's consequences for our actions because of our way of life. Uh, but then he says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. What is it to be transformed? Be changed. Change. The change. The way you think. The way you conduct yourself by the way you think. Okay. So I've, if I'm doing sinful, harmful things, I need to change from that. Now, how do I do that? Let the word change your mind and your thoughts. Okay. And how does Paul word it here in this passage? By what? The renewing of your mind. Okay. Right. The renewing. I've got to change it to something that's better than that. And I, the access that I have is to God himself. Now mm -hmm. we're new. Okay. And the idea of holy, that's against the worldly life. And he sums up this process in the last part of this verse when he says, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Pretty well spells out where I need to go, doesn't it? My ways not very good sometimes. Has anybody got a temper? <laughs> the truth be 
<laughs> yes, but uh, some of us were given a larger measure or portion of that. And we have to try extra hard to control ourselves. And sometimes we say and do things that are not right. And that's part of this process. You've got to learn to conform yourself to God's way. Control that temper, that anger which you have. Uh, control that desire that you have for uh, fleshly things. The lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh. The pride of life. It's all been spelled out to us, hasn't it? So that's uh, God's plan. <coughs> what am I going to do about it? you got to study to find out what it is. <laughs> okay. I, I've got to renew my mind. I've got to find out what God's ways are. And then I've got to put them into action, don't I? Isn't that what Jesus was teaching while he was here upon the earth? And God said when they were up on the mountain there, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Hear ye him. So my way is not good enough. I think we're going to cut it off here and uh, we'll start in with verse 3 and maybe get this lesson done next week. Any questions or comments before we quit? Thank you.